Hey guys, Archangel Manga here, and uh, this is my stay in the industry, uh, anime, manga, and one game. Haul, uh, actually for the months of uh, September and October, um, this is again another combined haul. Um, as I haven't been collecting that much uh, manga and anime these days, because obviously I've got a massive backlog to fill, so... Uh, so yeah, uh, let's start off with the anime, as usual. In fact, I'll, start, I'll, sh I'll show you the one game that I got. Um, uh, Nino Kuni, uh, Wrath of the White Witch. This is actually officially the, uh, I think it's the first JRPG game um, that I've uh, ever played, or ever started playing at least. Um, and I got it just because, it's, you know, um, the character designs, the um, the in-game um, animation and stuff like that was uh, produced by Studio Ghibli. Uh, that was like kind of the major selling point uh, for this game with me. Uh, so far it's pretty good. Um, this isn't a premium release, it's just kind of like a standard release. Um, you know, so I got it for pretty cheap and it's second on anyway, so... So yeah, Nina Kuni, the White Witch, that was the only game I got this month. Um, so the kind of going with Blu-rays, or shall I show you the DVDs? I'll show you the DVDs first. Um, I got uh, Cowboy Bebop, the movie. Um, because I've seen Cowboy Bebop, the series already, I needed. I know I needed to get this because um, the movie is uh, canon to the series, and I think it's, I think it's, um, I think it's set like in between maybe like episodes twenty-three and twenty-four, something like that. Um, you know, towards like the end of the series, but. Yeah, um, you know, it's Cowboy Bebop. Um, how could I say no to this release, even though it's just, you know, kind of standard. It doesn't really come with anything special. Um, it's just a kind of standard DVD, so. But it's Cowboy Bebop, so, you know, that's a win in itself. Um, and I got a, a Ghost in the Shell Steel book, but no, it's probably not the one that you're thinking of. That was recently released by uh, Manga UK. Um, it is Ghost in the Shell Solid State Society, um, standalone complex movie. Um, I got it in Steel book, the DVD. Um, you know, this is really, really rare, as far as I'm aware. Um, comes with like a, a booklet and, you know, some, two discs, I believe one is like, just got extras and like, one of them's got the movie on it. Um, but yeah, I was really happy with this, uh, I found it second hand. Um, it came with everything, uh, that it originally came with. Uh, yeah, I'm just really happy that I got this, uh, steel book. Solid State Society, as you can see there. Yeah, there you go. Um, okay, next, uh, use some, uh, DVD box sets. Um, first, I got uh, Lime Barrels of Iron, and this is one of the uh, MVM deals of the week. That was on, you know, I think uh, about a month ago. Um, I watched the first episode of this, uh, and it seems alright, you know. I picked it up for the sole purpose that it was a mech anime, and uh, because I'm kind of watching Code Geass and reading uh, Mobasic Gundam, you know, I've kind of been like on a bit of a mech binge as of late. So I thought, why not? Let's see, uh, let's see what more of the mech genre has to offer. And it was only ten or so, I thought, why not? Um, let's save some of the disc art. Um, it's got a reversible cover, um, which looks pretty cool. I'm not going to get that out right now, because it'll just take forever. I don't want to you know, let this video go on for a long time. I'll just take out the disc so you can have to get like, a little feel of what it's like behind. There you go. I think you can see that. There you go. Um, yeah, reversible disc art. You know, that's always a win. That's always a plus. Even though it's, you know... Like, never really going to be uh, shown. Uh oh, oh, well, that's not good. We've got stuff falling over, guys. That's the one thing I don't like about doing these hauls, is when everything starts falling over. So I might have to edit this out. Um, I'm just going to get in the way of the camera right here, guys. Start on my shelf. I don't like things falling over. So all this afterwards, but uh, yeah, I'm just kind of shove this back in here. Yeah, because. Uh, any time I do my holes, I kind of just like, because everything's already on the shelf, I have to like pull everything off. So, you know, it kind of just screws up my arrangement, everything, everything starts falling apart, as you can see. Um, Alright, so, moving on. Um, next box that I got was uh, Welcome to the NHK. This is what, this was another MVM deal of the week, and I'm really happy this came up on the deal of the week, because this is a series I've been wanting to get into for a very long time. I've heard very good things about it, and it's a very popular show. Um, you know, I guess you could say it's a cult classic uh, among anime and manga fans. Uh, nothing special about the disc art, it's very, very basic. But I'm not particularly too bothered about that because I know, I know, I know the show itself is pretty good. You know, even having not seen it, I know it's like about a uh, Hikikomori guy or something like that. It's got like comedy and you know things like that, but it's actually got you know pretty serious themes of suicide, or at least that's what it says in the back. Uh, so I'm you know, looking forward to seeing that, something different. Uh, another DVD box that I got was Kaon, the complete. It says the complete series, but it's only actually the first series. Um, yeah, this is just kind of like the standard manga UK release, but you know, a moe show about cute girls doing cute stuff. 
uh, you know, that's a selling point for me. Um, <laughs> it's mostly about music and setting up a band, but I, I heard for the majority of the show it's just basically eating cake, as you can see most of the girls on here doing that. Um, so yeah, I, I like cute girls doing cute stuff. I'm not a, you know, I want to go out of my way to kind of watch a Moe show, you know, by streaming or anything like that, but, you know, if, if, if I can find a cheap bargain, you know, in terms of DVDs, any, I'll fix the thing up. Uh, okay, next, Blu-rays. Uh, first Blu-ray I got was uh, Ghost in the Shell Innocence. This is the second Ghost in the Shell film. I think it's a, like a direct sequel to the original, like, 1995 one. Um, directed by the, like, the same guy, um, Mamoru Oshii, uh, the same dude, you know, behind the original Ghost in the Shell film. I've seen this before, but uh, I wanted to trade it and get the uh, the Blu-ray instead uh, because uh, I uh, I want to get the, um, the the original Ghost in the Shell steel book as well. Uh, talking about steel books, I got a really rare release here: Akira, the uh, the Blu-ray steel book collector's edition. I picked this up for a really good price. Uh, it was used, but it's in pretty much brand new quality. Um, as you can see, it's still got the uh, the cardboard sleeve on it, you know from from when it was released, you know, that was it remained, you know, pretty well intact. Uh, but you know, that's not what you're interested in, you're interested in the actual steel book itself. Looking very beautiful. Um comes with a uh an art book or like a I don't know, I don't know what's in here, I haven't looked through it yet, but yeah, uh, I'm really glad I got my hands on this because the only other um Akira um Blu-ray release is just the, like the standard sort of you know Blu-ray sort of thing. I don't think it comes with any extras. So I was really happy I got my hands on this because it's out of print. Um, and as soon as I get the uh, the Ghost in the Shell steel book, that'll mean I'll have uh, all three, you know, manga UK steel books of like the you know the classic animes. So I've got I've already got the Ninja Scroll one. Obviously, I've got the uh, the Akira one now. And as soon as I get the Ghost in the Shell one, I'll have like the top three sort of you know Western um, uh, animes that you know just broke the West. Um, anyway, moving on, I got another uh, Blu-ray release, another Kaze release, um, Black Lagoon: Rebirth of Blood Trail. Um, the uh, five episode OVA series, um, which you know directly follows fr on from the uh, the first and second barrage of the original um, Black Lagoon series. So, but I think this one centres on uh, Roberta, you know, hence the title. Um, so yeah, I'm looking forward to watching this because Black Lagoon is one of my all-time favourite anime, uh, or it is so far anyway. Um, I got another collector's edition um, Blu-ray, Redline, uh, another film I've been wanting to see for a very, very, very long time. Um, heard, you know, the production quality of it is absolutely uh, just outstanding. Um, so yeah, that comes with like a nice sort of, um, you know, box and then you've got the, bl the Blu-ray itself. It comes with a booklet and two discs with a reversible arc um, on the, you know, slip cover. But I'm not going to get it out because I'm not trying to blast through this video. Redline. Okay, and... The penultimate uh, collector's edition Blu-ray I got was uh, Attack on Titan Part One. I had to pick this up on release. Uh, in fact, I'm kind of going to, I'm going to move these. I'm going to move my camera in a little bit closer. There we go. I think that's a little bit better now. Yeah, Attack on Titan Part One uh, collector's edition uh, comes with the nice like box. You know, sort of similar to how um, Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood was released. Um, yep, yeah, comes with like a standard DVD inside, but. We also get another another booklet, you know, it's got character profiles and stuff like that in it, and reversible. Oh, wait, hold on. Yeah, it comes with three discs, and you get reversible um, cover art, which I'm not going to show you because uh, I'm pretty sure everybody in the grandma has already seen the Attack on Titan uh, release for the UK so far. And last but not least, um, you guys know I've already got this um, this massive behemoth of a Blu-ray set. Gurun Lagan, the Ultimate Edition, cost uh, nigh of £100, um, but I think it was worth it. You get like the entire series, both movies, and a crap load of OVAs and extras, um, and a pretty cool art book. Yeah, obviously I'm not going to get this out, um, because I've already done an unboxing video of this, if you want to check that out. Um, I'll put a link in the description to that video so you can check out and see what's inside this baby, because it is huge and there is a lot of stuff, you know, cool stuff in it. Though I would have liked if they put like a poster in it, you know, that would have kind of like rounded it off and made it like completely perfect for me because, you know, I like something to show for it, um, other than it just, you know, standing on the shelf and, you know, obviously the art, I'm not going to get the art book and display that, so I would like, you know, I would have liked there to be a poster in this, but, eh, what can you do? 
it's still a great release. So yeah, that was it for all, all my anime. Uh, now we'll move on to the manga. Um, I've got a pretty cool. I've got a pretty few cool releases. Um, not as much as I'd liked, um, as I would have liked to have picked up. But you know, uh, I've got some. Let's see some uh, continuing releases of uh, manga that I've already been reading. Uh, latest volume of Claymore, um, volume twenty four. I say the latest volume. It's actually been out for quite a few months now. Um, I think it came out like just around the start of the year, around May or something like that. Uh, another good volume. Um, Claymore is actually coming to an end, um, you know, disappointingly. Um, just when it's getting to a point in the story where it's actually really starting to like get better, I think. But yeah, Claymore Volume 24. Um, again, I got uh, another um, latest issue, latest volume of Attack on Titan, Volume 13. Again, I picked this up in uh, uh, in September, but you know, obviously I'm showing it now. Uh, another good volume. Um, not really much action, uh, more about uh, like the history of like certain characters and stuff like that. But it, you know, needless to say, it was a good volume. And the latest volume of One Piece, Volume Seventy Two, New World Part. Uh, let's see, Part Twelve. New World is part in you know, twelve parts now. So this New World arc uh, might be even longer than the Water Seven arc. Um, or it will be getting close to that, I know, because the Water 7 arc was quite a few volumes, maybe about 14 or 15 volumes. So yeah, the New World arc, we're actually in Dressrosa now. Um, so yeah, the, you know, the great volume, um, the Colosseum, you know, Luffy versus Don Xinjiao. Good volume, what can I say? Really enjoyed it. And I got a new release, uh, or like a new sort of series that I'm starting to collect. Uh, Nisekoi, Falls Love, Volume 1. Um, I'm aware that this is like a comedy romance or something like that, but it's a shonen, so there won't be like, you know, sort of like shoujo-ish elements in it from what I'm aware, because it's a shonen jump title, but I heard it's good. Um, I know the anime aired, I think, I believe it was last year, and it got, you know, a pretty good following, you know, it's a pretty popular series, so I thought, why not, you know, pick it up. I don't, I don't have that many romance series or, you know, anything like that in my collection, so, you know, I thought I'd start with this. Okay, uh, I've got a light novel. Um, my first ever light novel, um, it's an old Tokyo Pop release, and that's uh, Twelve Kingdoms, Volume 1. Uh, I never actually realised this was a, a light novel when I was checking it out on Amazon. Still got the uh, the bloody barcode on there, <laughs> sticker barcode, I don't think that's going to come off. Um, but yeah, um, I just thought I'd check it out, you know, I was kind of disappointed when it came and it was a light novel, but, you know, I did bother sending it back, it's got a really nice, um, you know, hardcover design. Uh, got design on the hardcover, got like an embellished sort of logo there, almost like a wax stamp with the uh, the name of the the series, Twelve Kingdoms. So yeah, you know, you know, for as much slack as Tokyo Pop get for releasing loads of unknown titles that nobody picked up towards like the end of their uh, you know their, their business run, they did a they did actually do some really quality releases. Um, you've got some pretty cool, and there's some art pages in here as well. Um, as you can see there. I'm not really sure what this story is about. Um, from reading the synopsis on the back, it kind of reminds me of um, what do you call it, Morobito, the Morobito series. You know, kind of being set in like uh, like a, a fantasy ancient Chinese world sort of thing, um, where they like magical elements and things like that. So yeah, it might be pretty good. Um, though I probably won't be able to get my hands on any of the other volumes because they're all you know ridiculously out of print, and this is like the cheapest one that I could find. Um, Talking about out of print titles and old titles, I've got the final volume of Strain by uh, Bronson and the artwork by Ryochi Ikigami. Uh, Ryochi Ikigami is one of the you know renowned sort of Gekika artists who works on um, Sanctuary and uh, Prime Freeman, I believe. Uh, his artwork is just absolutely phenomenal. Um, I haven't read through this yet, but as you can see, um, you know, the, let me try and find a good page with like a close up shot of like faces and things like that. Look how realistic this artwork is. It's just so freaking good. I can't wait to get my um, stuck into this series and now that it's completed, all five volumes, you know, I can read it all the way through and uh, review it for you guys. Um, I think this is like an old Viz title. Um, it says Pulp on the back, but I think Pulp was, yeah, it's part of Viz. Um, so this is a very, very old manga. Um, probably about 20 years old, you know, the actual publication of it. Um, okay. Uh, Got one, uh, got a hardcover, uh, latest volume of Vinland Saga. Well, I said the latest, it was the latest one I picked up, I believe volume 5 is out now. Uh, volume 4 of uh, Vinland Saga. Um, I haven't read it yet, I'm still only on the second hardcover of Vinland Saga, but I heard this volume is absolutely fantastic. 
Um, you know, people have been kind of really going on about how you know how brilliant it is and uh, how you know the story is really amped up from this volume. Um, but obviously, I'm still to read it. Um, you know, I wasn't. I, I was impressed by the first two volumes, but you know, I wasn't actually blown away uh, considering that it'd been really hyped up for me, especially by Anime News Network. Um, you know, yeah, I believe at one point it was in like the top ten greatest manga of all time according to Anime News Network. So when this was, you know, um, uh, announced that it was going to be released uh, in English, I was really excited for it. And then when I read it, I wasn't too blown away by it. But you know, needless to say, it's a good. It's a good series. Where it is um, another mega old release. This is something that I picked up at a, a comic fair a few months, uh, about a month or so back. Uh, Kazan Volume One. Um, I have never ever heard of this series. Um, it is a very very old um, comic. It's uh, released by uh, what's it? Comics One, and it's actually the size of a, like original Japanese tanker bond. It's even got the uh, like. The kind of slip cover. I actually thought it was in Japanese, but it's actually in English. Um, but it's it's very very similar to like the Japanese releases where they'll have like the main sort of cover in full color and then the uh, the, the cover again on the actual book itself in like kind of grayscale. Um, this is also flipped to accommodate English readers. Um, I don't know how many volumes this is, but um, I remember checking out um, on Amazon to see if I can pick up the rest of the volumes. And uh, they're all pretty, you know, pretty cheap to come by. So I'm gonna collect the whole series just so I can, you know, at least read it all. Uh, but yeah, Kazan Volume One. Let me know if anybody's actually read this or even heard of it. Um, it's by uh, Gakko and Miao, or at least he say it's presented by Gakko and Miao. I don't know who those mangaka or authors are, or maybe it's just one person, Gakko, Gaku Miao. <laughs> I really don't know. Um, but yeah, Kazan Volume One. An absolute unheard of series. Uh, an another thing that I picked up at the comic fair was uh, Puella Magi Madoka Magica Volume 1, um, story by Magica Quartet, art by Hanu K Hano Kage. Um, I picked it up because I've got the, the anime for this. Um, I heard that the uh, the manga itself, though, isn't a really good adapt adaptation from the anime. Um, so I'm going to read watch the anime first and then read through the manga. Um, Okay, uh, another rare title from the comic fair was uh, Volume 1 of Welcome to the NHK. I uh, picked up just because it was like £1, and, uh, and uh, you know, I'm probably know, and I'd probably know that I'm not going to be able to pick up the rest of the volumes, but you know, it was £1, and it's a Tokyo Pop title, so obviously it's going to be very rare and expensive. And some more really awesome Tokyo Pop titles that I picked up at the comic fair. Uh, Cyborg 9, uh, sorry, Cyborg 009, whoops, from the uh, Tokyo Pop Vintage line. Uh, by Shotaro Ishino Mori, uh, classic mangaka. I don't know because he's got stand up. Um, I'm pretty sure you, a lot of you guys have heard of Cyborg 009. Um, the artwork looks very, very, very reminiscent of uh, of a certain god father of manga. Um, can I get this in there? I get in the shot. There you go. You can see now. Uh, this is only three volumes of it. This uh, volume three, volume four, and volume five. I think it's like an 18 volume series, so I'm probably not going to be able to pick up the rest of the series, but I'll just picked it up for collector's sake, you know, I'm probably never going to be able to read through it unless it's, you know, picked up by like another, you know, publisher and released, you know, I don't know, but yeah, zero zero Cyborg 009, the manga, uh, something that I've heard about, but you know, never actually had the luxury of reading, and uh, talking about classic manga, I got the, uh, I think it's the second volume, or maybe the first volume of uh, the, um, the 1010 uh, manga uh, by Picture Box. Uh, this is uh, Last of the Mohicans by, what's his dude's name, uh, Shigeru Sugi, Sugiura. Um, I heard that some people were kind of disappointed with this, um, because this isn't, this isn't actually the original Last of the Mohicans, it's his like, reworking of his original story. Um, but you know, the artwork looks very endearing, very classic. Um, you know, it's got really extensive uh, notes and you know, essays in the back, so... And it's a it's a ten cent manga release, you know, similar with the um what's its name, um, the mysterious underground man by Osama Tezuka. And I really wish you know Picture Box sort of kept releasing these you know, um, you know high quality um, vintage you know story books because you know they're really good releases. So yeah, only two ever released. So for collector's six, you know, it's you know worthwhile picking up. Okay, uh, another manga I got. Uh, Time Killers by uh, Kazuo Kato, the author mangaka, who um, who you know pens out uh, Blue Exorcist, which I'm still to read. 
Um, but yeah, this is uh, just basically a book of uh, short stories. Uh, but the, the quality of the book itself is absolutely fantastic. Viz have done an amazing job with the page quality and, you know, the actual, just the, the durability of the book itself is very good. You know, they got really kind of high silk quality um, pages similar to, you know, the Mobile Gundam, the origin volumes, that, um, vertical push up, but the colour pages as well, you know, it comes packed with colour pages. Um, so yeah, I just picked it for that, that volume, you know, that reason alone. It's a thin book, but it's actually really weighty, and that's, uh, you know, very indicative of uh, the quality that the book actually itself has. So yeah, I'm looking forward to reading it. Um, maybe it'll get me uh, kind of interested in reading Blue Exorcist. You know, maybe not, maybe so, maybe not. Uh, okay, uh, penultimate volumes. Uh, I picked up uh, two volumes of Terraformers or Terraform Mars. I guess the, the, I guess the name is kind of a pun because uh, like the main antagonists are called Terraformers, and they went to Mars to terraform the planet. Um, but again, you can kind of say it's like Terra for Mars uh, because you know the humans have to go to Mars and exterminate these bugs, and you know it's like Terra on on Mars. So you know it's a pretty clever title. Um, and it's actually a pretty interesting story. Um, the anime just recently come out. Lots of people are disappointed with it because of uh, the censoring, but you know it's still pretty good, I think. And uh, the last uh, manga I picked up, um, unfortunately, I'm not going to be able to put this in Tezuka season because um, it was released before what I'm currently reading, which is Dororo, I believe, uh, and that is uh, Ode to Kirihito Part One and Part Two. Uh, I'm just going to push this in a little bit more. There we go. Um, yeah, uh, I think this is one of uh, Tezuka's like more serious works. I think this is like, one of his Gekika influenced works um, about some kind of disease which turns people into like dog-like creatures, as you can see here. Um, let me see if I can kind of like. Is there any way to like kind of match these faces? Are these faces supposed to match? I'm not exactly sure. Uh, whatever. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm just gonna leave it. <laughs> but yeah, uh, Ode to Kirihito. Um, looking forward to reading it. As and when, um, you know, it's a nice premium um, vertical release. But one thing that was kind of strange is that one volume is much thicker than the other, um, which is, you know, kind of a little bit of a problem because it looks kind of odd on the shelf. But oh well, you know, it's pretty good trim size. You know, the quality of the pages are pretty well, you know, pretty nice. So I'm not complaining too much. So yeah, Ode to Kirihito Part One and Two, and uh, that concludes my sustain in the industry for the months of September and October. Um, kind of verging on 22 minutes now, so if you've kind of stuck around for this long, then I appreciate it. I know my sustain in the industry has kind of gone for quite a while. Um, so yeah, you know, because I, I usually have quite a lot to talk about. Um, and, uh, you know, in the last piece of news, actually, uh, I'll let you guys know that the um, Kodansha USA have announced that the uh, the Parasite manga uh, is getting a reprint because, you know, so many people have been asking, you know, we've had, like, you know, the, uh, the anime for it airing, you know, obviously, like, um, demand for it is rising, which is really good, because, you know, obviously I own the manga, but I want more people to be able to read it. Uh, so yeah, that, uh, that concludes um, this video. Um, thank you for watching. Um, let me know in the comment section below uh, what you got this month, or, you know, send me private messages of your videos. Um, you know, I'd love to see what other people get, um, you know, because it gives me, it also gives me ideas of what I need to buy. Um, so yeah, uh, until then, I'm Archangel Manga, and I'll, uh, I'll catch you later, guys. See you on the flip side. Bye.